Hey, welcome back to an all new. Uh, let's try that again. Hey, welcome back to an all. This is why we record this, and I can edit it. If I did this live, you know how embarrassing that would be. You oh, it would be amazing. Well, you will be laughing the whole time. It'd be fantastic. Great ratings. I think you should. Maybe do it. I'll just start the show like this. Yeah, I think you should. Hear that. Everybody, it'll, it'll be behind the scenes. Exactly. Curtain. Okay. Cakes will be available later. Yes. Huh? <laughs> what? All right. Welcome back to an all new edition of the Talking About Cars podcast, where, yes, you know, it's all about everybody has a car story, a chance to forget about the craziness in the outside world and get into the craziness right here and now. <laughs> That's basically it. And a chance to indulge on in some great car stories from celebrities, from car personalities, and we have one of each. Now they're going, which one is which? I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. That's right. I have the personality. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm Randy Cardoon. That over there is Hot Rod Bob. Wave Bob so you can tell. There you go. And our guests, you know them, you love them from the TV show Two Broke Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that's also true. true. <laughs> that's, <laughs> nailed it. Girls Garage, yes. It's Bogey and Faye. Hello, gals. Thanks for coming into the show. Hi. Uh, this is Thanks for having us. This is, this is, <laughs> see, on this show, we, we, this is about all the sound effects we can afford, is this here. Yeah. Hey, Welcome whatever to, works. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to the show, guys, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. So we are on Zoom, as you can tell, and this is an op. And for those of you who are listening on radio.com, uh, this is interesting because we recorded this and the whole pandemic thing's still going on. I I'm going to start there and just get it out of the way. How are you guys dealing with the pandemic? Let me start with you, Bogey. What's, what's it been like? And did this interrupt any of your um, taping of the All Girls show? Oh, yeah. I mean, this interrupted everything, right? I mean, my... The, the show is on hold. We weren't flying out to Florida to do our filming. So that's, that was on hold. We're getting ready to start that back up soon. So that's exciting. And really pretty much everything else that I do in my life is around, around like bringing people together. <laughs> so whether it's a car show or teaching classes or the all female build that I do at my shop or the workshops or the classes, like all of that stuff, can't do any of that. So it's been an interesting time for me. Um, I still consider myself one of the lucky ones. You know, I'm not on the front lines. I don't, knock on wood, have anybody close to me who's been affected immediately by it. Um, and so that's awesome. And fortunately, I was, you know, in a position where I'm, I'm quarantining in a, in a okay house. Like, so I I'm, I'm count myself as very, very lucky and I'm very grateful for that. So all in all, it's all good. Faye, what about you? Uh, well, as, as Bogie said, I'm grateful to be essential. My shop is still open. Um, I, haven't, I haven't closed it down a day. In fact, I've worked kind of overtime. I've uh, been there the last couple weekends and plan on working through this entire weekend as well. Um, right. But, you know, the type, of, um, the type of customer, or I guess the type of jobs that I've been doing have been, um, I don't know, I found myself working a lot harder and a lot longer to chase the same dollar. So instead of, you know, a lot of us um, who work a flat rate pay are just like killing to get those gravy jobs, you know, those jobs that you do over and over and over again. And like, you just get so good at it, you know, which sockets and which ready, like you've got all your tools to waste any time. Um, and I have so much less preventative maintenance and routine maintenance, uh, which is obviously, I mean, sometimes it gets a little boring, gets a little routine, right? But like, you know, that that's kind of what pays the bills, you know, and like the, the time that you make up for those jobs, you can kind of spend like a little extra time diagnosing over here or a little extra time talking to a customer over there. And I found that most of my time in the shop has gone to, uh, has gone towards like, you know, really like, you know, making customers feel better about, you know, the repairs that they're choosing to do to their vehicle. Uh, I don't have people coming in requesting routine maintenance anymore. It's more just like, oh crap, I just got my last paycheck. I'm laid off. My car, like my check engine light's flashing. I've got this budget. What can I do? Help me out. So I've had to sort of restructure my, my warranty. I've had to, um, I, I don't have any interns or apprentices in the shop right now. And um, but I've also kind of gone back to doing some mobile work to, um, for customers of mine who are either elderly or just afraid to leave their houses for whatever reason. Well, 
for whatever reason. But, <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah. yeah. Why? And uh, you know, kind so of a, kind of a bummer. Um, you know, my uh, my I've been able to keep paying my rent, but my landlords haven't. So very good chance I'm going to lose the amazing building that I'm in. So it's affected me heavily um, in my shop. Even though I'm working as much as I always have, if not more, it's like the money's just not coming in. So it's mm. lousy, but. What's going to do? At least I'm working. <laughs> wow. Were you guys actually shooting the show when this happened or? We were, here? we were kind of like right about to fly out to film right as things were getting kind of serious. Like it was still kind of, yes. we didn't really know how things were going to go. Some states were starting to put in some restrictions, not, like kind of universally and we were supposed to fly out and like up until the very last moment we were gonna the go last moment the very yes. last moment we were on I the phone like, with each other like should we do it should we go i don't know should we go i don't i don't want to get stuck we like freaked out together like as boogie was like literally on her way to the airport and i was packing and getting ready to go like <laughs> <laughs> it's true i was I, glad that we I had each other to work through that than... with you know yeah <laughs> I was probably a little bit more nervous than Faye was, but, but she was like, like it's gonna be fine. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I think you maybe... ended up being right though. I think you <laughs> ended up being right. I think we would have gotten stuck or had a travel ban of some sort when we were out there. So I'm glad I had you as like the the sensible the sensible one. Would you tell her to turn around and go home? What's that? Would you tell her to turn around and go home? Kind of. I mean, I was supposed to fly out earlier than she was, and um, and she was having difficulty getting a flight because they were already starting to cancel them. And I'm like, this yeah. is a sign, y'all. This is a sign. We should maybe not do this. Maybe this isn't smart. We should we should lay low a little bit and see how this whole thing plays out. So yeah, it's been weird. It's been really weird not you know seeing each other and working together and being on set and. Um, it's this has just been such a roller coaster ride, I think, for everybody. Emotions are all over the place. And I think even for each of us individually, like one day I feel this way, one day I feel this way, one day I'm here, one day I'm here. Like I'm kinda all over the place. And I've just been really focusing on my my little personal mantra has been like be easy on yourself and be easy on everyone else. Like be easy on yes. those around you. Like we've just got to like love on each other and be respectful of one another. And um, no, that's that's so true. And like especially for people, I mean, I don't want to speak for Pogi, but I feel like we're very much the same in this regard. That we're both like we both have super high expectations of ourselves and like hold ourselves to like the super high standard of like things getting done. And in times like this, it's important to remember that like just getting through the day <laughs> um, is is like a, a huge accomplishment when you're around like you know, there's, there's so much sadness, there's so much craziness, there's so much uncertainty. And, uh, and this is like a mental health marathon, y'all. Like, this is, this is really hard. And like, I hear all these people saying like, oh, well, I'm home now. So like, I finally, like, I have no excuses why not to get all these things done. And they've got these crazy to-do lists. And I'm like, yo, calm down. Like, you know, just breathe, get through the day. Don't, don't take yourself in the middle of this pandemic and just start like dumping all these other expectations on yourself. Right. Like, forget that we have to survive first and that is awesome <laughs> everything else yeah. comes second yep so when you go back to shooting are you going to uh, uh you're almost going to be into the second another season so are you will you film two seasons back to back or are you just gonna no our so our season actually coincides with the calendar year so we started season nine in the beginning of of 2020 and we're just we just paused so we're still gonna film as many episodes as we were originally going to film. We just haven't filmed them yet. So now instead of you know filming two episodes at a time, we'll film three or four episodes at a time each time we go out to visit. So it's gonna be a little bit more intense, but it's not. we're not necessarily like splitting up or adding a new season. We finish our season nine at the end of 2020. Wow. Well, you know, if you guys have anything you wanna vent, like I mentioned to uh, Bogey earlier, uh, before we started to record, uh, yeah, we, the doctors are in, and uh, we will we will take your insurance. I just wanted to let you know if you wanted to, uh, you know, tell us. I like that you assume we have insurance. We work that's, for ourselves, yo. That's a good point. I forgot all about that. <laughs> that's, a point. that's a really Silly good me. point. <laughs> Therapy no, is expensive, it's just, man. It's, 
Yeah. It's been yeah. really interesting. You know, it's been from like a sociology, like psychology perspective, it's been really interesting to kind of sit back and watch, you know, how, how this is bringing out both the best and the worst in people and in companies. And it's been really interesting to see how some of the big companies and smaller yeah. companies have responded. Like it brings out where their true values are. And also in individuals, like when you, you know, people somehow losing risk, like just genuine, like human kindness and respect for one another. Like, I don't care what your views are, or your beliefs are, but let's not judge one another. And it, it's been very interesting to watch both the best and the worst come mm. out. Oh yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah, especially really if you though. happen to catch yourself going the wrong way in a supermarket lane and uh, somebody <laughs> decides to say something. And uh, actually that happened the other day. I was gonna say, that doesn't sound like a hypothetical. <laughs> no, well, actually I was on the right side of things. I'm walking along and I see, you know, they have these announcements every five minutes at the stores, you know, stay in the right lane. This is, we have directions and all this. And people are like, just getting snottier than all hell when you call them on that. And it's just like, okay. Yeah. You guys run into that where you are? I've, I've run into that. And I think, you know, what I've seen a lot is uh, somebody from the Motor Train family, Chris Jacobs actually posted something the other day where he was wearing a face mask at an event. And there were a number of comments to him about, you know, too bad you look like an idiot and your face mask and face masks don't work and nobody else is wearing it. So all this judgment around it. And I just, I had to say something. I normally don't, but I had to say something because we don't know what people's situations are right? Like, and I, I feel like just respect people's personal choices. We don't have to agree, just respect their personal choices. Cause we don't know. Like I have a good friend who has an autoimmune disease. She looks healthy. She looks perfectly fine. Right. Bay as well. Like you can be silent sick as they call it. Right. Like you can look healthy, but not be healthy. And so we just got to respect people's choices. Well, Faye, do you have an autoimmune disease we don't know about? <laughs> yeah, I have celiacs and a bunch of other no, weird crap from my childhood. So, um, so yeah. Although I don't, I don't like to act like it. I like to act like I'm, you know, impenetrable, but it's not, it's not true. <laughs> but Bogey said that really, really, really well. Um, and I think that she and I actually have totally different situations in terms of like how our governors, how our states are handling things. So I'm in like the middle of nowhere, Texas, and it's very much like a free for all. Like you don't see a lot, you don't see hardly anyone wearing masks. There's not a lot of, um, not a lot of rules and regulations around it. Um, things have been relatively open. Uh, actually, I just went to the gym last weekend and got tacos and sat at the bar a couple weeks ago. So things are opening up here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. But I think, I, I think Bogey, where you're at, isn't it a little bit crazier in Phoenix? It's a little bit stricter, but it's still quite a bit of a free. You live in a little bit more rural of, of yeah. an area where I'm in a more densely populated. So yeah. the regulations are still kind of loosey goosey. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and yet there's just so many more people. So there's more opportunities for conflict of thought processes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fair enough. So, and I personally, like, I, I, my opinion on the whole thing changes throughout the day, but I haven't felt any real strong desire to suddenly, our restrictions have been lifted to a large degree, but I don't really feel the need to go to a restaurant right now, or I've been enjoying cooking at home. Like I've been enjoying doing more uh, home type things. This is the longest I've been in my house. Yeah. Without flying to another state, like that's, in a row true. for this probably seven or eight rest. years. What's that? This woman is like the busiest person I know. Like you too, I think girl. So, oh my god! Like I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed. Like I, I've actually been wondering like how it's been affecting you because like you're such a bitch body and you do hold yourself to such a high standard. I've been like, I've been curious. Like oh my god, what is she gonna do now that she can actually enjoy her house and her pool and her life? You know, it's at been home? crazy. I've been, I've been honestly, it's been really a nice shift. This is the longest I've been home in years. I'm so, sure. But isn't it weird? that now you have that opportunity, you don't know what to do next, because you're like, <laughs> wait a minute, you know, something's wrong, I can actually relax, but I'm not relaxing, why is that? It took a little while, I'm not gonna lie, it definitely took a little while, I've, I've kind of adjusted at this point, um, and now there's a little bit of apprehension about, we fly out to film again in a week and a half, two weeks, and I'm yeah. like, oh. I don't know that I'm ready to go back to that crazy lifestyle yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's one thing everyone's gonna gonna have to get used to get used to traffic, 
It used to track to crowds waiting in line, putting your name in at a restaurant and waiting. The other yeah, thing is, I'm not used only, to that over here, but <laughs> yeah, but you know, the other thing is too, are, are your appliances going to make it through this? <laughs> are my appliances going to make it through? Yeah, your appliance, I mean, your, your dishwasher, your stove, your refrigerator, you've been using them so much more now. It's true. <laughs> that's actually, that's a good point, actually. Since this pandemic has started, our septic tank has overflowed three times. <laughs> oh. Oh man! Pay off those tacos. You're, you're not going to get into like that on <laughs> any other podcast. I just want to let you know. I just want you to know my Breaking life. News. Yeah, we can't afford to fix it, so it's going to keep on overflowing. I don't, I Breaking don't know. news: <laughs> Penny's septic tank has blown up three times in the last. <laughs> That's right. No hey, at least I chose to put my garden in the front yard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You get the greenest grass on the yard in the block, and everyone's wondering you know why. What's weird. And you're, you know what's weird is yeah. There's the most grass right there. And your well, dogs yeah. and green, cats are going. The greenest shit is what, literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop talking about that. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> All right. Uncalled for What's it. that? What's that? <laughs> We're a car show? Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. I get that. We, can, we might as well talk cars, I guess. You know, what, yeah. We could. We could. <laughs> we could kind of do that. Now, Bogey's been on the show. This has got to be what? Number three or number four for you? One more, and I think you get a sport coat. Oh, um, on your show? <laughs> I Do so. I get a sport coat? That would be awesome. Or, or a t-shirt or, or some other uh, two tired guys swag that Bob is yeah. hoarding in his house. Um, and then, of course, Faye, this is the first time you've been on the show. And yeah. there's so much to learn about you. For example, for example, Bob, take a wild guess where she went to college. She lives in Texas, so probably uh, New York. Well, you're close. <laughs> <laughs> See, easiest uh, way to master. Okay. <laughs> hey, where did you go Cambridge. to college and what did you study? Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I studied psychology. Oops, say it again. You're breaking up a little bit. You need to pay the Wi Fi bill. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, and I studied psychology. I made a degree That's... in psychology. I actually have you like no how she avoided that answer? It. Yeah, you still haven't told me what college you went to. Good. Oh, you said where, not what college. Oh, okay. <laughs> I went to Harvard University. I graduated in 2010 with my degree in psychology. And uh, I will say, I was about halfway through. I had a little bit of a midlife crisis, and I was really disappointed when I found out that they did not offer an automotive class. So, no, well, they can improve, I guess. She's <laughs> a you get a gal. Yeah. How'd you get involved with cars? How the third used to always say it. She's a Hobbit girl, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, careful, oh, watch so out. You actually I'm, uh, you're reading your minds and predicting your thoughts. Uh, no, uh, you know what? If you were to ask my mom uh, how I got involved in cars, she would tell you that I came out of the womb loving cars. Uh, I, I just always loved things with wheels, and I loved going fast. So uh, roller skates, bicycles. Actually, I was a big ice skater, too, because I grew up in rural New Hampshire. And um, I just, I always, always had a thing for cars and how fast they went. And I was just fascinated by them, you know, but I was always also like very feminine. I was just like kind of a tomboy, I guess. So, like I had this awesome picture of me when I was like uh, my, I think second or third birthday. And I got like this big, they used to, they used to make them lot different, like a Tonka truck that like actually dumped and it was like, you know, nice and metal. And then also like a wedding dress. So like, those were my likes when I was, you know, two or three, I don't know, know how old, but I don't know. It's just, it's just always been something that I loved. Um, but I wish I could explain it, but I can't. Wedding yeah. dress in a Tonka truck. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrong with that. No, that's if, I th if I think of it later, I'll send you a picture. It's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> reminds me of, reminds me of runaway bride. <laughs> you played with Tonka trucks? Is that a thing? Yeah. You know what? Actually, I guess it could be runaway because one of the things I really liked about that Tonka truck is that I could fit in it and dump myself. So, I mean, and then I could also like drive it down the, the driveway. So it was, it was like a legit Tonka truck. Yeah. Dump myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So much and somehow we're back to the septic now. tank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what to do about that. Okay. Just <laughs> the truck in a septic tank. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be weird. Um, so. Right. You're a psychi psychology degree. You got a degree. Yeah. You actually participated in, you were a um, therapist for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, have a, I have a kind of a rule with myself that I'll give anything a year. 
um, because a lot can change in a year. And uh, so I got to make sure that I truly don't like something and I'm not just like mad at myself that I don't, I don't understand like what's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, there's always like, there's always that phase of just like awkwardly getting your feet wet in like a new career or like a new thing. So I'll do anything for a year. So I was a therapist for a year at, uh, God, what was I, 21 years old telling uh, grown, grown adults how to live their lives. It was great. Um, but, uh, but I always felt like it wasn't quite right. And actually I got my job as a therapist before I even graduated college. Um, mm -hmm. and I, my, my boss was really surprised when I quit. She was like, hi, oh, you're good at this. And at the time it's like, man, that was 10 years ago. I was making $75 an hour to just like tell people what to do. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> but you know, there was something inside of me that just like, wasn't, it just didn't, it didn't click, you know, like I definitely had to. Um, act differently than I felt inside. You know, obviously this look doesn't work. So clearly I had to like change a lot about myself just in terms of like how I presented myself to the world, also how I acted. Um, and, you know, at the time, even as I was a therapist, I had a, um, oh, my, my, my phone temperature is too high. So if I cut out, just let me know. Um, but, but when I was a therapist, I could not wait um, until 5.30 rolled around and I was done with my clients for the day and I could take off my freaking pantsuit uh, and get in my, uh, my shop clothes only to, in the evening, I had an apprenticeship, an internship at a local Volkswagen Audi garage, unpaid internship, um, because I had blown up the engine in my Volkswagen Rabbit. It was the love of my life car, which is actually right here. Uh, that explains and the Volkswagen engine behind you. Yeah, that's a that's that's air cool. That's a sixteen hundred gold for it. That's not for this. I actually swapped a good bomb that you picked up. engine into this car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I decided I wanted to daily drive this car till the day that I died, and I kept on having catastrophic failures. I'm like, all right, I need to rebuild this engine. But I, I I had an apprenticeship, and like, I mean, I would go after after my therapy job. I would just go to the shop, sweep floors, empty oil change containers, like nothing glamorous, but I freaking loved it, man. Mm. And I got to the point mm. where like. It was actually a, um, a conversation that I had with my mom. I know Bogey knows the story so well. She's probably sick of hearing me tell it. So uh, I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. But, um, you know, I, I had a phone call from my mom when I was a therapist. And she was asking, like, hey, how, you know, how are you doing? How are things going? Are you happy? And I was, like, kind of unsure how to answer that question. Because in my mind, I'm like, wait, I'm doing everything right. I got my degree. I've got a job that I have my degree in. I'm getting paid well. I'm 21 years old. Like I'm doing everything right. But yet, like, I just feel empty inside. And I was like, I, God, mom, I don't know if I'm actually happy or not. And she said, well, you know, I never have heard you happier in my life than when you tell me the latest thing that you did to your Volkswagen. And she's like, hey, just, just so you know, you know, take this with a grain of salt, you know, take this as you will. But like, just so you know, no one in this family is going to be disappointed in you if you don't follow the career path that you got your degree in. If, if you, if you want to be true to yourself and if you want to follow the path and your passion and, and start working on cars for a living, like that, that is okay by, by us. Don't feel like you have anything to prove. You have nothing to prove. And it was like that moment when my mom gave me permission, not, not like I needed it because I've always been like a little bit of a rebel, if you can't tell, but, um, but just like knowing that I had support behind me to pursue my passion, that was like, man, that was everything. And the next day I gave my two weeks notice at my job and I started working at the books by Gennady shop full time. And the rest is history. That was cool. uh, 10 years ago. So when someone brings a car into your shop. 12 years ago. Oh God. Okay. So when someone brings a car into your shop and says, can you analyze the problem? You really analyze the problem. Literally analyze the problem. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and you know what? Uh, sometimes they analyze the customer too. Sometimes people just come in and they just need a little bit of wrench therapy in their brain, man. I don't know. Depends. <laughs> I, I feel like being a mechanic, being a shop owner is so similar to being a bartender or being a therapist. Really? Like, <laughs> it's all the same, right? You're listening to people's problems and you're, and you're helping them problem solve and figure it out. And yeah, absolutely. The neighborhood technician, the neighborhood shop owner, like you become the, the therapist for a lot of your customers. Oh yeah. Bogey nailed it. That's a hundred percent true. And it's like something that I spend as much time just talking to a customer as I spend diagnosing the car, just make sure they're okay. <laughs> and then making yeah. sure their car is okay. Mm -hmm. Totally. I know you can relate. Okay. <laughs> when we talked to you, Bogey, and when we were down in Arizona, your team of people working on women working on the cars, it was therapy for them. 
yeah, it was therapy I'm, for me. Yeah, I that's there, how Faye and, and I met. therapy for me. Yeah. Faye and I met through one of those all-female builds that we did. And I think it was therapy for all of us. I, you know, those, those builds, those experiences, they are all about connecting with one another and finding strength in connection. And yes. I think it, it became, you know, so many of us, Faye, I know you experienced this too. Like we're constantly normally the only woman in our job environment, right? Oh, yeah. We're the first woman they've ever hired. We're the first female mechanic that people have ever met. Like there's tons of us, but in our daily lives, we still feel like an only. And so those builds really did become therapy in a lot of ways because it was just like, oh my gosh, there's another one like me. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> exactly. And that was really yeah. validating. Absolutely. When I went out to work on um, Bogie's first all-female build, the Shetty Montage, uh, man, I went in there. I was so scared. I did not feel like I was worthy. I didn't feel like, I mean, I had been idolizing Bogie for about 10 years because like, I, she was the first female mechanic I had ever heard of existed. And so I'm just like, oh my God, she can do it. I can do it. And like knowing she existed somewhere out there in the universe gave me the strength to just like, you know, carry on with what I was doing. So I mean, first of all, it was crazy to meet her and work with her. I felt so unworthy. Um, but that was the first time that I ever worked with another woman in a shop environment that was actually wrenching, not just as a service advisor, which is nothing against service advisors. You guys do an incredible job and I love my service advisors so oh. much, but um, oh, it's just different. But it was, it's it was just so different. validating. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's just, it's just different. And I, I remember walking into Bogey shop and like, there was no, she didn't vet me. She didn't ask to see my resume. She was like, oh, oh, so I hear you build engines for a living. Great, get to work on this. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm instantly trusted. Like she just, instantly, she looked at me and she didn't judge me. She knew that I could do what she asked me to do. And I've never been instantly trusted like that before. It was the most, I never felt more comfortable, more heard, more validated in my life in a shop before. Like that, that was a life-changing moment for me. And I'm sure that there are so many other women that felt that way being involved. So if anyone, any lady techs out there are watching this and you're hesitant about whether or not you should fly to Phoenix and be part of one of those builds, man, you will not regret it for a second. It's, it's so worth it. Which brings up the question, Bogey, what's the latest on the Volvo build? So we've been on pause, obviously. Um, I, I could have continued working on it in the shop by myself. I'm deemed essential. I can go to my shop. I, I'm still able to do that, but that's not the point of the build. Mm. So it has not been touched since we went into quarantine. Um, and um, yeah, we're on hold. I, I'm grateful that my main sponsor and partner on this BASF, they've been really gracious about it and they have uh, allowed us to move our unveil date from SEMA this year to SEMA next year. Mm -hmm. So we now have a longer time period where we can have ladies come out and we've got more opportunities for, for more people to get involved and to spread the word and to do the good stuff that we do there. So I'm excited about that and I'm excited to get back to things. We're, we're still on hold right now. We're, um, we're kind of watching because so many of the ladies who are involved come from out of state. So they're flying to come out. It's still a little like, we're not, we're more concerned about people's health than we are about the Volvo, right? <laughs> like that's the most important. So we're going to be watching things for a little bit and kind of see how they unfold over the next several weeks. You know, you guys both do a podcast, I see. Um, so, I don't do a podcast per se. I do uh, like Instagram lives and that kind of stuff. Kind of like but. Bob. Bob does Facebook live. Okay. That kind of stuff. So Very nice. Tell me about your uh, Instagram live. Um, well, we both we both do some variation thereof. Um, so let me tell you about hers. I just have been doing a happy hour every Wednesday. Nothing crazy, but I've been bringing some some different guests on throughout the industry, trying to share other people's stories and just having some fun with it. It's been a really neat thing. We've got a little visitor here. My cat has decided to join us. Sorry. <laughs> Ah, okay. Hi, right. handsome. Come on. I'm talking to the cat. Well, sure. I was going to say, is that the name of the cat? We know better than that. Yeah, his we name is Handsome. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm horribly uninspired when it comes to naming animals. So, yes, his name is Handsome. Okay. Not the I almost one. brought my chickens, but I'm like, they're going to make too much noise and be too annoying. So, well, yeah. <laughs> that was going to be one of our questions. Well, hold on. Let, let me just 
segue into this and then we'll talk about your podcast here. Well, tell me about your podcast first. Okay. Yeah, your turn. Oh, 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 oh. Um, so I'm on my, gosh, uh, tomorrow's going to be my 18th podcast, which is um, incredible. But all I, I mean, I, I call it a podcast, but uh, it's actually a YouTube live stream and then I convert it into audio file um, for, for free download. But um, it started out as a um, just a random a random happy hour live stream in the middle of the pandemic when like I was feeling down and one of my friends that I that I work with a machinist um, uh, Danny was feeling down and we're like you know what let's just drink some wine and go live on YouTube like why not you know and it was so awesome and it was so received that we started doing it um, every week and then it changed to twice a week. So we do a uh, book club, a uh, uh, happy hour book club, believe it or not. Actually, the same time as Bogie's. So I, I always watch hers after I'm done with mine. And I, I've been actually like really loving the guests that you have. Your last guest was awesome. Like I, I, I didn't really know much about her until that, until that past. I really, I, until the, the live streams, I really enjoyed uh, listening to that on my drive home. But, um, but yeah, we do, we do book club on Wednesday nights. Right now we're reading a book by Smokey Eunuch. Um, that actually is just is so freaking cool. And I, I, I just feel so, uh, I'm disappointed in myself. I didn't know about Smokey Eunuch earlier. I, I, I mean, I, I just feel such a kinship with him and his, uh, his creativity and his no-nonsense attitude and just kind of telling it like it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, I really, really enjoy that guy. So that's uh, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, we do book club. We, uh, we do a reading assignment about 30 pages a week and then we catch up and share the things we learned and then we do some show and tell. Because um, Danny has a lot of um, smoky eunuch uh, actual, you know, real uh, memorabilia, like real stuff from a shop when it closed down. And, it's, you know, and, and actually uh, yesterday um, I, I read an actual document um, from John DeLorean's file cabinet. And it, like it was just live on the show. It was just it was the coolest thing. And I just I feel like I'm being transported out of this dark time and into like just another era that I kind of feel nostalgia for, even though I wasn't alive during that time. I just kind of feel like nostalgic for for those days, and then Friday we just um, we just have a random chit chat, and uh, so tomorrow, next Friday is gonna or this 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 coming Friday is gonna be uh, we're gonna we're gonna vent. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drink wine, and we're gonna vent about uh, uh, things that make us mad. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Okay, let's not Don't piss it off, Bob. Okay, <laughs> of course it'd probably be good publicity, but never mind. <laughs> nah. Okay. No, so you're so young, you probably won't be able to do this as we have now time for Name Those Lyrics. You ready? Faye, this oh, is geez. it. Oh, jeez. Name Fill Those Lyrics? lyrics. Oh, What's that? God. Fill His idea. Lyrics. When you find yourself in danger and you're threatened by a stranger. Wait a minute, I have the lyrics in the top of my head. I almost wrote them down. Wait. When you find yourself in danger and are threatened by a stranger and you think you're going to take a lickin', there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I... You've got me. me. There used to be a cartoon by the name of Super Chicken. And... See, I'm blowing her mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear you have this chicken thing. Explain. Yeah, but I but I grew up without TV, man. I'm like I'm so detached from mainstream media. It's crazy. <laughs> Faye and I are the worst with that. Like I'm. I thought I was bad because I've never watched. I don't watch any movies. I barely watch TV. I'm totally. I always joke that I've lived under a rock most of my life, mm -hmm. and everybody always makes fun of me because I don't know any popular references whatsoever and then I met Faye and I felt like I was super in touch with popular culture <laughs> in comparison so like between the two of us it's ridiculous people will yeah. talk about tv shows and we're both like what <laughs> yeah or like actors or something like we're supposed to know them hey people even make reference to other motor trends like you know I know people. I'm like who the heck is that I don't know I know, <laughs> I know. they have my show awful, no I don't know even, even if I do even if I have watched it, like I don't remember names. So I'm always like, you know that one movie with the guy that has the hair and the, the eyes? And do you remember I, the last time that we were filming, um, we hung out in your, ho in, in your hotel room and we watched Grease together? It was yeah, the first I made time her I watch Grease because she'd never seen it. Well, I loved it. Grease is the word. Yeah. Oh, I know, it's it. great. <laughs> so, so Faye, explain the whole chicken thing. <laughs> oh my God. 
You Tickets know, are the best. Uh, geez. Explain what it is so guess, and how it came about, I guess. Oh, I, no, I just, I, just, I, just, I just freaking love chickens, man. I can't explain it. Uh, well, I grew up on a farm, and then I went to private school that was on a farm. So, like, you had to, like, work on the farm as part of, part of school, part of your education, which is actually pretty cool. So, like, I've had chickens, like, my entire life, but it was not until with my uh, late teens, I had a little mini, mini rooster that, that changed my life. And I don't uh, uh, so like they only get, yeah, but he has like the biggest personality, and um, that dude went everywhere with me. He rode, he just like sat on my shoulder. He rode on my bike handlebars, and I take him to the store, and he would just wait outside of the store on my bike handlebars, like while going to an eleven and get like a coffee or whatever. That's so cool. And this is like. And and him don't be why. And he's gonna be thrown into the woods to be eaten by wild animals because that's what you do on like a working farm. And uh, and actually that that reminds me, I was I was at farm camp. I loved farms so much. Like I lived in a farm, went to school on a farm. That was not enough. I had to go to farm camp in the summer. Um, <laughs> and you know you raise chicks from from babies. So you know and at, at the end you keep the hens, you put a hen on, and you roosters in the woods like that's how it works in rural new england apparently yeah and this guy i got so attached to i'm like man i'm taking him home so i i put him in my lunch box and brought him home uh, <laughs> i think i was like 14 or 15 I'm like, this is this is my dude and uh i had him for eight years and uh yeah he just he changed my idea of like what chickens were i realized they were actually really smart uh really intelligent little guy like i trained him and he was really friendly and uh, he would wear a diaper and like hang out in the house like he was like literally my life kick, and after that, like, I I never having another again. Like there's never the been to animal. Popeyes before, have you? <laughs> uh, I've been a vegan since I was thirteen. Uh, you oh, know, well, I'm not, not a very good vegan, but most I'd say like ninety percent <laughs> vegan. <I'm> okay. vegan. <laughs> good for you. That's I'm sort of close to that. I'll occasionally <laughs> yeah, say I mean, that that's about whatever it. Whatever your body wants, man. Yeah. <laughs> not for everybody. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. So. Um, <laughs> Bogey, uh, so any uh, changes in what's in your garage right now? Um, well, kind of, yeah. I just, um, I, I purchased a new vehicle at Barrett Jackson, which was crazy because I never in a million years thought that I would buy a vehicle at Barrett Jackson. Um, but it just kind of happened. And so, yeah, I, um, I purchased a, a Nash Metropolitan. Yeah, oh, cool. very cool. And it's so cute. I love it, it so, so much. <laughs> Cooper Roadster. I, what's that? Cooper Roadster. Is it a Cooper or is it a The Metropolitan? Top? It's yeah. it's a it's a neither. It's a little sedan ish thing. It's a little two door. You got a steel roof. Well, there's a convertible version. Oh, it's not a convertible. It's a okay. it's a, okay. yeah still. So it's a coupe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um. It's absolutely adorable. I've always been in love with tiny cars. Like I have a, a small, large obsession with tiny cars. And um, so it is the beginning of my collection. Cool. <laughs> okay. What's that? So that brings up the next question that we always ask from time to time. What's next that you want to get? Well, all of them. I want all of the tiny cars. I <laughs> I've decided you, that when I say BMW I Zeta, I know you love that car. Which one? <laughs> Which one? The BMW Izetta. I oh, know I you know. love I that. I totally want an Izetta. I want an Izetta. I want um I want an old Fiat 500. That's next on my list, I think. Okay. Um, I oh, love yeah. them. They're Original. like adorable. Um, there's an old Honda. I think it's a 600. Right. That is right. adorable. There's a bunch of Subarus that were only, like, they never came to the U.S., but mini they're bus. adorable. The, the mini bus. bus, the little bus. Yeah, 360s. Yes. Yeah. Is, is it for a 360? Yeah. Yes. That's what they, yeah, that's what they call the car because it was the size of the engine. Yes. So they had the little car, and then they had a little mini bus ver van yeah. version of it. I don't know what it was called, but it's adorable. Yeah. Honda and had I, one, too. I need all of them. I want all of them. <laughs> We've so I decided that one day, one day, I'm yeah. going to have a micro car collection. 
Wait a minute. This is now my new like vision and mission on this planet is to have a micro car collection. Take up in this garage, please. I support that dream, though, dude. That's brilliant. <laughs> Bob, you said you know somebody. You may have a connection. connection. Yeah, we got a connection for the small cars that are coming in. Do you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, from Japan, definitely. <gasps> oh, yeah. We must talk. Oh, and your girl, Crystal, man. She's got yes. all sorts of crazy little teenies. Totally. And I've actually talked with Crystal about that. We have a friend who imports vehicles um, from Japan. And so, yeah, okay. we've talked with her a little bit about that. But I want to talk to you, too, about it. Because I, like, I want a Nissan POW. Have you seen those? Yeah. Uh, yes. I used, to work, I used to work for Nissan. Oh, did you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've always been on the corporate side. Okay. Very so, cool. <laughs> <laughs> can you connect me with somebody who's got a POW? <laughs> I don't know, but I can connect you with someone that's been importing uh, a lot of JDM stuff. So that's not a problem. Then we'll go out. I want a POW and a Figaro. It'll be great. Yeah, and you'll you'll get a kick out of her too. She's crazy. Awesome! It's a she. Very cool. Yes. So Yay. Kay, uh, what you have a car that you've been working on for a while? Tell us about <laughs> yeah. that and what's on you. Very enough. Car. One day you want to yeah. get. What's that? I what said, tell me about that car that you have now and the car that someday you, the top three cars that you want to get someday. Oh man, I, you don't have to ask me twice. Yeah, so it's like the love of my life is my 1989 Toyota Supra and I'm rebuilding the engine right now and I got a whole bunch of videos uh, like about the entire saga of rebuilding out on my YouTube channel. I rebuilt the engine about five years ago and uh, the thing was all the wrong with it and I blamed myself for five years and like literally thought that I was a flop. I'm like, who am I to call myself a Toyota technician when the engine that I runs like absolute garbage? Um, and just discovered actually earlier this year, at the beginning of this year, that um, that I had bad machine work done. So now I'm just rebuilding the entire thing because I don't trust any work that was done by anyone else. I'm like kind of learning the process. It's been amazing, uh, and I freaking love that car. It's that I that I'll be buried in that car. Uh, the car that I want next. Um, uh, in addition, I, I can't get rid of my cars, so I'm just like starting a collection. I guess I gotta move my cars your garage. But uh, one of the cars is on my bucket list. You, what, you said three? I got three. The first one <laughs> is I'm a huge Group B rally fan, so I'm I have I have like a love affair going on with the Lancia Delta, uh, and and I always want one 80 mile beer. I love the the wide uh, the wide body style on the one that that you see so often. That's like the iconic Group B rally one. I would kill for one, and now like now you can import them. So. Uh, if anyone's got a 1989 Lancia Delta and wants to sell it to me, let me know. <laughs> uh, the other <laughs> next is a, um, a Mark II Volkswagen Rally in all-wheel drive and diesel and a five-speed. I would kill for one of those. Once again, not made in this country. And then lastly, uh, but probably like the, the one that might be um, the most the most bring expected out of all those is uh, I really want the A90 Supra. <laughs> I want so bad. I, I don't know if I want to own one. I might just lease it. Uh, or, but you know, that's so far out of the price range. That's just like you know, I'm I'm seeing down the tunnel so far. I can't even see the light. But maybe like 20 years from now, I'll have a I'll have an 80 Supra. <laughs> well, well, you know, you're gonna be a big time star here soon. You're gonna be making all that big time star money, like Bogey. Oh yeah. Oh definitely. I mean, Bogey knows. I mean, she's she's a millionaire from being on. Oh TV yeah. For nine years. She's a oh, yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. For those, for those of everybody who's going to be hearing this only in audio and can't see the funny face I'm making, that is completely not true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're treated like garbage or we're paid like crap. It just means that... No. Um, that it's not uh, the life of luxury. Us, it's not what people expect. Uh, we choose to do it because we love it and, gonna them, and we're definitely not taken advantage of, but, you know, I was, I was calculating. I'm like, I don't know if I'd make more just being at home and working regular hourly rate. I don't know. But that, but that, that's not really what matters because what matters is that 10 years ago, I saw Bogey and she was in the public eye in a way that I'm sure was uncomfortable for her nine years ago, um, but it inspired me. And I've been granted the, the blessing of, um, of being one of very few that is addition in the public eye. And you know, I feel like I'm, I might have a chance to impact the next generation as well and that is so much more meaningful than a dollar amount amen um, like, amen i think Faye and i 100 percent share that belief that like if you can see it you can be it and yeah by just being ourselves by being who we are but doing it publicly like 
we're affecting people who we may never meet. And I think that's the thing that keeps us going. And like what a huge blessing it was for me to meet Faye and for her to share her story with me and tell me how I affected her life. Like that kept me going, right? So I was giving her this gift, but she was giving me a gift in return. And I think we both share that belief system that, you know, it's not always easy. It's not always glamorous. It's not the big money that people think it is, but we, we do it because we believe that we are doing something that is helping others and it, it helps us in return. <coughs> Excuse me. That was so, that was so well said. And it's like, yeah, for every one of me out there, you know, there's a hundred more of you, you know, it's like, you're just, you're just not seeing them or not hearing from them. Cause they don't feel like sending you a message or showing at your shop, showing up at your shop. Cause they feel probably unworthy. <laughs> you know, it's scary. Put yourself out yeah. there being vulnerable and being like, Hey, you changed my freaking life. You know? Um, hey, Faye, how did this, how did your break come to get on the show? Cause I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time you've done TV wrenching, so to speak. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Um, actually, I think it was through Boki and the Chevy Montage. Huh? I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. You know, it's like I, I sort of have mixed. I, I have mixed. Uh, um, I've heard it was my YouTube channel, but I have a hard time believing that Boki didn't have a role in that. So. Hmm. So now that you're down to two people on the show, Boki, anybody <laughs> else that might be coming up through the ranks? Maybe a third. You know. Group? Your guess is as good as ours. Honestly, right now, um, they are seriously considering leaving it just the two of us, which um, is a departure from what, what they've been all about in the past. Obviously, when, when Jesse left the show, they were insistent that we were going to always be three. So Rachel joined the team, and that was awesome. Um, when, when Rachel left the team, they were like, it is going to be three people 100%. And, and that's how, how we got Faye. Um, and now they're kind of seeing that, you know, maybe doing just two isn't a bad thing. And we have, I think, really great chemistry on camera and we both just truly enjoy this. And the fact that we've worked together off camera beforehand, I think is a really beautiful thing. So it's, it's, um, it's just been a lot of fun and they've decided to leave it just the two of us for right now and hopefully, We'll have the opportunity to bring some guests on periodically, which I would love yeah. to do. I think we're both all about promoting and sharing the stories of other women in the industry yeah. and shining a light on that. Like there's more than just us, right? There's thousands of awesome women out there doing awesome stuff. There's more than just us. Um, but for the show core, I think it's just going to be Faye and I mm. for now. Okay. You never know. Yeah. We'll have to see. You're stuck with just us. I'm sorry. No, it works. Really? We love you guys. Come on. Everybody we loves have to get you us. guys out to the Dr. George show next year. Oh, I would love to come out to Dr. George show. Yes. That's a great show. Yeah. We'd have, we'd have fun with you. And I think the audience would, would really appreciate you guys too. Well, yeah. let's, let's hope that uh, there is a SEMA this year. Cause yes. it, you know, at this point, nobody knows. And even though things are opening up uh, and we're talking November, they're even talking now about the Oscars in February being pushed back. So there's all sorts of crazy things going on, but let's hope we get you guys uh, to SEMA again this year. And this time, Bob and I will hang around the, uh, yeah. the uh, booth over there where you guys get interviewed until we finally catch up and say hi. It was nice <laughs> of you guys to come along. Thanks for joining us. Bogey and Faye, uh, now how do people contact you if they want to reach you somehow? Uh, social media is really the best for me. Instagram, Facebook, Bogey's Garage. Uh, or my shop page, Girl Gang Garage. Yeah. Yeah, and, and same for me, YouTube. I'm youtube.com slash Dudley, but everywhere else you can find me at Pistons and Pixie Dust. That's true, they say Pistons and Pixie Dust. Yes. That's, yeah, you were breaking up there a little bit. But That's anyway. Because uh, Fabian scary, so. <laughs> uh. Day. We'll post it, but it's, it won't be a problem. Don't forget to listen to our audio podcast on radio.com, knx1070.com, and talkingaboutcars.net. Don't forget to click our menu on demand and uh, talking about cars on the knx1070.com site. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Bob, of course, with his uh, Great American Auto Scene Show, or GAS, G A A S, where Bob always says, Good morning, I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got GAS. And that's something that scars us for years to come. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't forget to subscribe and become a Two Tired Guys Productions patron by going to patreon.com. We have all sorts of swag of sorts. Yes, get that. Until next time, I'm Randy Cardoon for Hot Rod Bob. We have Faye, we have Bogey, and we'll see you next time as we have fun talking about cars. So long, everybody.